boxer who fought while blind. This is the story of the man who struck fear in one of Mike Tyson's inspirations. Probably the greatest boxer of the late 19th century and early 20th century. And yet, you never heard about him. Jack Dempsey confessed. He was the only man who struck fear into his heart. Sam Langford was a born fighter. Possibly the only fighter throughout boxing's history in which weight classes truly serve no purpose. And it's a tragedy that a boxer of his caliber has been largely forgotten. Sam Langford was possibly the greatest fighter who ever lived. He was a man who weighed anywhere from 145 to 160 pounds. And within a short time, very few heavyweights would risk their undefeated record or risk the title against him. Sam was born in 1886 in the Canadian province of Nova Scotia. When he was 15, he headed to Massachusetts where he found his calling as a fighter. Langford was no ordinary man. Viewers were continually baffled as to how a man only five feet, seven inches tall could defeat even the biggest heavyweight contenders. Some of his contests were 60 to 100 rounds. Sam Langford was one of the greatest boxers of all time. ESPN also ranked him the second hardest puncher of all time. Joe Gans was the first ever African-American to win a world title. Joe Gans dominated the ring. He became known as the old master. He won 158 of his 196 fights. Sam was only 17 years old when Gans was 29. Sam beat the champion in a manner that left no doubt. Langford had won, but at the weigh-in, Langford failed to make the 135-pound limit, and he would not be awarded the title. Less than a year later, Sam was matched up with Joe Walcott. At the time, most boxing authorities considered him the greatest welterweight champion of all time. He also had a reputation for knocking out bigger men. Langford was able to draw blood from the champion's mouth. Controversially, the fight was declared a draw, a decision that upset many in attendance. A few years later, Walcott would be knocked out by a fighter named young Peter Jackson, who would then be defeated convincingly by Langford, further solidifying Langford's claim as the best fighter in the welterweight division. He began his career as a lightweight, but always had his eyes set on the heavyweight division. Around that time, there was another black fighter, 28-year-old Jack Johnson, who was 6'1", and 30 pounds heavier than 20-year-old Langford. The fight went the distance. Both men, bloodied and bruised. There was no doubt in the spectators' minds that Johnson was the victor. But little Sam won the heart of the crowd, and he was the man they cheered for. Most fighters would have dropped down a division after a loss like that, but Sam was still eager to face the big boys. A heavyweight named Fireman Jim Flynn agreed to meet Langford. It wasn't until Sam found out he was only being paid a quarter of the amount Flynn was getting that he said, this is going to be the shortest fight you've ever seen. Momented to the first round, Sam fainted with a right that swiftly brought up a left uppercut that jarred Fireman Jim's jaw with such force that it was heard throughout all the arena. Sam's reason for fighting heavyweights was because fighters in his own weight class, the middleweight division, were not as eager to test the tremendous power he possessed. Langford had to actively convince others to fight him. In 1910, Sam's main aspiration was to win the world heavyweight title. Jack Johnson was now the champion, and he despised Langford. Jack had once agreed in writing to give Sam a rematch, but then reneged on his obligation. European fight fans, resentful of Johnson's avoidance of Langford, declared Sam to be the true world champion. At one point, Langford's team offered Johnson the above amount of $10,000 to fight him, but the impending mega fight between Johnson and Jeffries shut down any negotiations. Finding American opponents willing to fight him was a serious problem for Sam, so he traveled the world and became famous on the world boxing scene at that time. International fans praised him for his exceptional power and physical condition. Mike Schreck was expected to put up a good fight, but Langford punished him so severely in the first minute that the police intervened and ordered the fight to end. By the end of the 1910s, Langford had outlived his best fighting days. In a fight against Big Fred Fulton, Sam took a right hand to the temple that severed an optic nerve cord. And after pain, he described as like a thousand needles piercing his skull. Sam permanently lost vision in his left eye. Langford did not believe he would live to an old age and was never cautious about spending his money. His days of living in luxury and helping struggling fighters were over. Sam was broke. Knowing that no one outside of boxing was going to hire a homeless, partially blind and unqualified former fighter, Sam was forced to extend his fighting days. He no longer had his range judgment or quick reflexes, but he was still capable of crushing even the largest man. He goes to plead with Jack Dempsey's manager, Doc Kearns, for a chance with Dempsey. And Kearns said, Sam, we were looking for someone easier. He was a blind and one-eyed man, 40 years old. That's how great Sam Langford was, and sadly, no one has heard of him. By the end of his career, all of his fighting prowess was gone. Almost completely blind now, he depended on someone to guide him to the ring. His boxing days officially ended in 1926, when he was stopped by a no-name fight in the second round. Despite a career fighting top opponents in every weight class, he was never rewarded with a title. Sam Langford never lost his cheerful demeanor and positive attitude, and was always a happy man. 
If fate had not dealt Lankford such a cruel hand, he probably would have been a five-weight world champion. He disappeared, and he was found in the early 50s, half-starved, living in a cellar in Boston. And uh, they interviewed him. And Langford was an unusual man. He was never bitter. He said, well, I've got my guitar. I've got my memories. I'm okay. 